what will change after COVID-19? Well, you know, one of the things I, I know that's going to change is going to be the scope of work. Um, you know, I've been watching a lot of chatter on, uh, on social media and uh, watching some webinars and things like that. And the common thing that I'm, I'm seeing is that so many people, uh, so many cleaning companies are not cleaning for health. They haven't been. Uh, so that's the one thing I definitely see changing is the scope of work because now they're going to have to add cleaning, cleaning for health uh, to their uh, scope of work, meaning that they're going to have to start disinfecting touch points. Um, so that's the biggest change I see that's going to happen. Now, because of that, because they're going to be uh, changing the scope of work and adding touch points to their cleaning, um, that's going to increase their production rates. Because obviously, if you're going to perform more services, you're going to, it's going to slow you down. So that's what's going to happen is that these companies are going to see that that's, uh, that it's slowing down their production rates. <clears throat> so they have to make adjustments there. So with the adjustments to the production rates mean that they're probably going to have to charge more for their service. But you know, here's the, here's the cool thing. If you're, if you're thinking about this, especially if you're a company that had been doing this already all along, uh, nothing's changed for you. You know, uh, you don't have to try to make these adjustments. Uh, your scope of work, your production rates, you know, cleaning for health. You've been doing that all along. So, you know, you, you won't have to play the game of trying to recalculate and re increasing prices and, and, and playing that game with your clients that, oh, you know, well, by the way, you know, because it's going to take us longer, we're going to have to charge more, uh, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, okay. So that's what's going to happen. Now, some of these people uh, might get pushed back from their clients, you know, because they do have a budget. Um, you know, and then they're, uh, they're probably going to just try to sell them on the, the whole idea of, you know, well, if you want to be safe, you got to clean and disinfect and, you know, uh, keeping your customers and your employees safe, you want to disinfect, uh, and so on and so forth. You know, and what I really see happening is that maybe the frequency of cleaning, uh, may increase for some clients just because of that fact, because of the fear of that they don't want nobody to get sick and they want to make sure they're covering all their bases. It's just a, a liability thing for them. So they may increase the frequency of cleanings. So you might have a, a location that's only cleaning one day per week. Maybe they're going to go to three days per week or five days per week. Um, so I, I kind of anticipate that happening. But again, even with the frequency of service changing, uh, it's still going to come back to a budget price. It's, all, it's going to be about price, no doubt about it. Um, so that I don't see changing. You know, price has always been an issue, uh, and people always use that as a bargaining chip. Uh, you know, cleaning contractors uh, uh, come in at low price, you know, because either they're a small company or they don't know any better, uh, their production rates are wrong, uh, whatever. But, um, you know, that's something that's always going to happen. It's always going to be around. Uh, I've been doing this 34 years, and it, that's been the deal since I started. And it's always going to it's always going to be that way. So prices will always be an issue. But the one thing that I see what's going to happen though is people are going to start throwing in services such as disinfecting, you know, into their scope of work and uh, into their price. So let's say you do have a, a, a client that's a one day per week service, and uh, and you sold them up into a three day per week service or five day per week service, and you know even though that <clears throat> that disinfecting <clears throat> may take you a little longer to do. You're going to come in and clean and disinfect. Either you're going to spray with a, a electrostatic sprayer, or you're going to fog, uh, you know, either method, whatever you're going to do. Um, that's uh, that's what you're going to do is that you're probably going to throw that in uh, just to maybe sweeten the deal. Uh, let the let the client think that they're, you're providing more value uh, by throwing that in. Uh, so that's the strategy I really see people are going to be using. Um, so keep that in mind when you're out there, uh, you know, writing proposals and things that people will probably use that strategy. They'll be throwing in their disinfectant services uh, and uh, hopefully trying to play the value card when really all along they should have been doing this stuff all along. But, you know, that's, that's another story. You know, that's, I'm pretty passionate about that. We've always cleaned for health and, uh, you know, I, I really find it interesting that now everybody's jumping on the bandwagon because of, the, you know, the coronavirus. But anyway, uh, like I say, that's another video. But that's what I see going to happen. And so, you know, keep it in mind. And, you know, uh, you might end up using that strategy yourself uh, to go ahead and throw in the disinfectant service, you know, to lock in the deal with people. 
you know, it doesn't matter if you're doing an RFP or if, it, if it's non RFP, you know, just a general proposal. Um, but those are some things to think about, you know, so that's what I really see what's happened, what's going to change after COVID-19. And uh, I think people are going to take uh, cleaning for health much more seriously now. And, uh, you know, it's going to change things. So uh, if you'd like more information on the COVID-19 or any processes uh, or training, you know, you can go to the janitorialstore.com. Uh, we got a wealth of training there. And, uh, you know, uh, and if you're uh, not a subscriber to our YouTube channel, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've got hundreds and hundreds of uh, videos there that will help you build a successful cleaning business. So thanks for checking in and uh, we'll see you next time.